Hey, what's going on? What's going on, Jack Sparrow? How you doing, brother? You got a you got a question? You got a question? What's your nationality? Who who are you? Who? I can't speak up, brother. Use your man voice. Oh, you can come up. All praises. What's your nationality? Who? Put what down? Put what down? Put, yeah, I'm asking because you sound really feminine. That's why I said that. I asked you what's your nationality. What is my nationality? I'm asking you a question. Yeah, I'll pay you. I'll pay you, but I didn't want that on my table. Talk to me. I'm asking you a question. I'm asking you a question. If, if you're not if you're not strong enough to have this conversation, then walk up the street. Okay? You sat over here listening to him. I'm asking you a question. And you don't tell me what to do. You're not running nothing up here. You're not running nothing up here. You got some nerve coming up here telling me to put something down. That's why you got your bottle thrown. streets that means that it's everybody that's not them right so our people actually going through turmoil going through all types of affliction all types of murder right having the by word the pie word uh, the pop the proverb and the by word placed on us right that actually goes against their people their, 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 it goes against them but it's a feather in your cap about who you are in these last days because you call yourself Honduran what does Honduran mean you see that but you're really an Israelite from the tribe of Asher, more than likely. I'll read what you got. Bring that up. I'm going to show it's you the Bible. It's the book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse 18. Give me uh, Ezra 2 and 59. And they assemble all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Uh -huh. And they declared their pedigree. Now, what's the pedigree? The lineage, right? So they declared their lineage, right? Read. After their families. After their families, read. By the house of their fathers. By the house of their fathers. And that word house goes to family. So they declare who they are by the house of their fathers, right? Uh, right? So so the idea that they are uh, the true Jews is false, right? The true Jews through the Bible, right, is all about the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, right? So-called, because you're not Hispanic. Hispanic is a property of Spain, right? Española, right? So... And she can come too, sis. Come on, what's your nationality, sis? <laughs> what's your nationality? She's Peruvian, right? So you're on this four tribe chart as well, right? You got to find out who you are in these last days because more than likely, y'all are Israelites from the tribe of, uh, of Asher, Zebulon, right? Things of that nature. So I'm going to show you one more uh, account, right? Where we couldn't, if, if you couldn't prove who your father was, you couldn't come in the congregation, right? So this is all going back to the father. When you go to their 259, yeah, when you go into the books of the so-called Jewish man with the yarmulke, where in the Bible does it say put a yarmulke on, right? That's not, that's not biblically sound. You see what I'm saying? That's something that, that's called oral tradition. They made that up, right, as they went along. And it was actually contrary to this Bible that they said they're the, the people of the book of. That don't make sense, right? And, then, and I was reading something where... The people in Israel right now has the second or the first or second rate of skin cancer, right? Because it's, they're not they're they're not equipped. They're not made for that land because their skin can't handle that heat. So they get all this skin cancer by living in Israel, right? And as a result, they uh, they shows you who they who they're not. You see what I'm saying? Two and fifty nine. That's it. Yep. Chapter verse fifty nine. I mean, yeah, verse fifty nine. Chapter two. Back a couple. You good? Chapter two. There we go. Yep. Ezra, chapter two, verse fifty-nine. And these were they, and these were they which went up from Tel Malak, Tel Hasab, Cherub, Adon, and Emmer. But they could not shoot their father's house. They couldn't do what? Show, 
shoot their father's house. So, so they couldn't show where their fathers were. They were trying to get into this location, but they couldn't get in. They was like, no, you can't come in. Why? Because I couldn't show my paperwork, right? Read. And their seed. And their what? And their seed. And what's the seed? Your children, right? Your children, right? Read. Whether they were of Israel. You see that? Whether they were Israelites. Am I an Israelite? Show me the paperwork. Right? We used to have that. Give me uh, Jeremiah 7 and 14. Right? Jeremiah 7 and 14. Right? Because it was actually, how can they be the real Jews when the Bible says we were going to lose our heritage? Right? You can't really say you're a Jew. Right? And, and, and let me ask you another question as he's getting that. Who told you that they were Jews? They just said it, but they never proved it. Right? There's no proof in that they're Jews. Right? Biblical history, biblical archaeology has told us that the real Jews might look like me and you. Right? Read what you got, King. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore will I do unto his house. Read it. Well, hold on. Seven, uh, Jeremiah 7 and 14. Where's that? Uh, now even thyself should this uh, 14? Jeremiah 14? 14? Yeah, Jeremiah 14. It's the most high. Right? So, so understanding that, right? No. Uh, this is teaching me here, 17 and 4. 17, yeah. 17 verse 4. Yeah, that's it. There's a book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 4. Now listen to this. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy inheritance uh -huh. that I gave thee. See that the most I gave us a heritage, right? But he says you're going to discontinue from that. Why? Read. And I will cause thee to serve thy enemy. To do what? Serve thy enemy. Now, what were the Honduran people doing when Columbus came? When Conquistador came? What were they doing? Read it again. And I, and I will cause thee to serve thy enemy. What were they doing in the land of, in their own land? Who was who were they working for free for? For the so-called white man, right? The so-called Spaniard. Read. In the land which thou knowest not. In the land which thou knowest not, because we weren't even indigenous to Honduras, right? We weren't indigenous to the Americas. We, we fled over here, right, to escape oppression. So you will be a northern kingdom Israelite more than likely from the tribe of Asher. Does that make sense? All praise to the Most High. Read. Huh. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger. Now how do we kindle a fire within the anger of the Most High? By serving other gods, right? The Most High dead says, I don't want you serving other gods, right? Give me uh, Jeremiah 2, right? Give me Jeremiah 2, verse uh, 28, right? Jeremiah 2, 28. Right, the, the one, the only one, the one way you can make the Most High God mad is not being obedient to His words, right? Not being obedient to His laws, statutes, and commandments. Jeremiah two, chap Ch Jeremiah chapter two, verse twenty-eight. Come on. But they were of, they, but they, but were, yeah, that's it, twenty-eight. But were are uh, thy gods. So the, the most I said, where are thy gods? Because during the time of Jeremiah, we started what? We started worshiping other gods. We started doing the uh, adopting the customs of the heathen, right? We celebrate Christmas. All right, so get that in Jeremiah uh, 10. Read. But where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? Let them arise. If they can save thee in the time of thy trouble, for according to the number of thy cities are thy gods. See that? So the Most High, side, Most High God says, the gods that we worship, right? The gods that we bow down, it's not named Yahweh, right? We worship images. There's a lot of idolatry going on in Honduras, right? There's a lot of, of pagan worship, right? That we learn from the Assyrian captivity, right? And the Most High God said, why can't they come save you from oppression? When, when conquistadors came and took over, why can't they come and, and save you from the, 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 the hand of the so-called white man? Why? Because we've been actually disobedient to our God. We didn't keep the commandments. We didn't keep his laws, statutes, and commandments. We started eating pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster. Right? We stopped, we started shaving our face, right? We cut our, we didn't wear no fringes. You see what I'm saying? All these things go back to us being obedient children of the most high. Right? That's our culture. That's our heritage. Right? We don't. Oh Judah. Oh who? Oh Judah. Oh Judah, come on. Chapter two, uh, verse twenty-nine. Uh -huh. Wherefore will ye plead with with me? Ye all have transgressed against me. So what, is, tra the Lord. what is transgression? 
Sin, what is sin? Let's, let's get the definition of sin. Let's get 1 John chapter uh, 3, verse 4. Right. And read what you got. That's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 1. Come on. Hear ye the word which the Most High speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. O house of Israel. So you an Israelite. Israelitos, right? Read. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Name is Yahweh. That's the Most High talking right here. Read. Learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of what? Of the heathen. So everything about us. Juan Carlos, before we came in this truth, we all learned the ways of the heathen. Everything has all been the ways of the heathen. Our last name, our language, right? Our first name. We, us, us uh, keeping Thanksgiving, right? Why is a Native American man keeping Thanksgiving? What happened during Thanksgiving? It was a massacre, right? So why is Native American people praying over a Thanksgiving turkey, cranberry sauce, right? Macaroni and cheese, uh, uh, damn collard greens, all these things, right? Why are we commemorating a day of massacre, right? Read. Learn not the way of the heathen, uh -huh. and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Which is zodiac sign? You see that? We shouldn't even know that, right? That's the dismayed the signs of heaven. But you know you a Libra. Why? Because they told you you was a Libra. They told you. And you know what's crazy about having these zodiac signs? You go, you go through the list of the characteristics of a Libra. Yeah, that's me. That's me. That's me. And then you, it, it gives you a behavior. It gives you an excuse to have behavior, right? That's not even you. That's the Libra in me, right? Hey, what's funny about that is, you know, I was dating a sister one day, and you know, me, me and her had zodiac signs that was against each other. And every argument, she would go back to the, the signs of heaven, the zodiac sign. And I'm like, no, you just gotta act right. Uh, you gotta get your, your life together. Don't, don't blame the zodiac signs because we button heads. You were Aries, I'm a total. That don't matter, right? Come on. Well, the heathen are dismayed at them. Hey, the heathen are dismayed. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a. I'm this, I'm that, so I gotta act like this. I gotta act like that. People literally make their whole characteristics based off damn zodiac signs, right? That's wicked as hell, right? Now you say you celebrate Christmas, right? Watch this, read on. For well, the customs of the people are vain. Uh -huh. One, cut a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with a ax. Now what do you put in your house during Christmas time? A Christmas tree, right? Read. They deck it with silver and with gold. Now, don't you dress your Christmas tree up with what? Silver and gold. Silver and gold. Come on. They fasten it with nails. And they do what? Fasten it with nails. Fasten it with nails. What do you put your tree in? A tree holder, right? And with hammers uh -huh. that it move not. That it move not. They want the tree to stand erect because the idea and the history of uh, Christmas goes back to a pagan god named Nimrod, a pagan man named Nimrod, who started paganism. The father of all pagan religions goes back to a man named Nimrod, right? Come on. They are upright as the palm tree, uh -huh. but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. They like it. Be not afraid of them, uh -huh. for they cannot do evil. So it's saying, don't even go into these ideologies of Chris Christmas, right? Because you can't, they can't save you. That's why we read in Jeremiah 2.28, where are thy gods if they can save you, right? Who told you Christmas was a, 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 a holiday to celebrate? Right, now who told you about tabernacles? Who told, you don't know about tabernacles, right? Who told you about the Passover? You don't know about the Passover. What about uh, Feast of Trumpets? No, not the Feast of Trumpets. It's a, it's a feast day or a high holiday called the Feast of Trumpets. They never told you about that, but they told you about Christmas, Mother's Day, right? All these are pagan holidays that go back to uh, Babylonian and Mesopotamian cust uh, customs. You see what I'm saying? So they never told you about your ideology or their identity. Give me Psalm 83. Let's get the enemies of the Most High. Get that in John 3 and 4. First John 3 and 4. I'm going to get you the definition of sin, Juan Carlos. Hear what you got, King. First John, chapter 3, verse 4. Come on. Whosoever cometh, who, whosoever committed sin transgress also the law. You do what? Transgress also the law. So whoever commits sins transgress the law, right? What law are we talking about when we say the law? The biblical law, but who gave the law? To who? To man, through who though? Through who? Who, who? Moses, right? Now in these laws, you had a bunch of dietary laws that you can't eat, that you can't eat. You had feast days that you must commemorate, right? You had high holy days that you must uh, uh, go to. You had a Sabbath day that you had to, uh, I, you know, I, uh, commemorate, right? And observe, right? Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. So if you're in sin, you transgress the law. 
right? So if I'm not keeping none of these laws, I'm in sin, right? Read it again. For sin is the transgression of the law. So now we look at the biblical definition of sin. It's not just being bad, right? It's not just doing wrong, right? It's not just having a, a, a being a, having a bad attitude, right? By, by biblical definition, sin is the transgression of the law. Give me Leviticus 26 and 40, right? Read what you got. There's a book of Psalm, chapter 83, verse 3. Start at 3, come. Come. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Uh-huh. And consulted against thy hidden they ones. They did what? Consulted against thy hidden ones. So what ones. does it mean to take crafty counsel? When I say counsel, what does that mean? Uh, but but it mean, it's more than one person, all right? It's a whole group of people, right? Coming together. Read. They have said, and come and let us cut, Salaki, and let us cut them from off from being a nation. He said, let us what? Cut them off from being a nation. So these crafty, these men, right, that came and took crafty counsel said, let us cut them off from being a nation. Talking about Israelites, your people, my people, right? Our people, right? Let us cut them off from being a nation. It's very important because the heathen understood when the Israelite man, woman, and child was keeping the laws of the Most High, they were the top nation. We were always the top nation when we were in our glory and we were doing the right thing. But then when you tell a black man or a Hispanic man, right, that they're not an Israelite and they're Hispanic, now we're not keeping the laws of our father. Now we're not keeping the feast days of the Most High. Right? And that takes your power away because the Most High is our power, but we must be obedient for us to tap into that power. Does that make sense? Read. Let us cut them off from being a nation. So all these white folks call you uh, Hispanic or Mexican or Latino, that's them actually calling you everything but what your father called you. Right? They might as well call you a derogatory term. A lot of our uh, brothers and sisters are proud to be Latinos, but they don't understand. It's like saying I'm black and I'm proud. There's nobody that's black. Nobody's skin tone is black. Right? Nobody, I don't care how dark you are, I have never seen nobody the color of this damn phone. Right? On this table. Right? Nobody's that color. So the idea about me calling myself black takes the power out of who I am as a man. Right? Same way as you call yourself Latino, it takes the power out of you being an actual child of God from the tribe of Asher. Right? You an Israelite, read. Let us cut them off from being a nation uh -huh. that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. You see that? They tried to really take the name of Israel, right, and wipe it out, erase it out the history books, but the Most High is not going to let that happen, right? Because he loved our people. Name me Hebrews 8 and 8, right? Let me show you who the, who the, uh, who the new covenant is for. Leviticus uh, 28 and 46. Yeah, Yeah, it's like the last 28, one page over. That's it? Okay, come on, come on. Give me uh, 26 and 40. Is that what I want? It's a book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 8. Come on. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saying the Most High, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Read again, Salaki. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come. Uh-huh. Say at the most high, Come on. when I will make a new covenant. A new covenant, right? So you are you agree there's a covenant, right? Who's the covenant for? Between who? And his people. Who's his people? The Israelites. Get a brother a hand, man. Get a brother a hand. See, these things start to come out. Hey, what's funny about this is as this word is coming out with Kyrie and Kanye and all these celebrities, now our people are starting to wake up even more and more. It makes more sense, right? We've been teaching this thing, and you know how long it takes sometimes for us to have our people like you actually get it? But as the world is getting worse and worse, our people are getting more and more strong, right? Read. Huh. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Mm -hmm. Come on. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers uh -huh. in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Now, who did the Most High, right, lead out of Egypt? The Israelites, right? Read. Because they continue not in my covenant, uh -huh. and I regard them not. Come said, on. Said the Most High. Read. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel 
after those days, said the Most High. So all the Israelites are going to get this new covenant. We all qualify for the new covenant because if you're an Israelite, the new covenant is for you. It's what the Bible just said. Right? Uh, Read. I will put my laws into their mind. I will put my what? Laws into their mind. Now what laws are we talking about in the New Testament? Laws of Moses, right? Read that. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 29. Come on. They, they clave to their brethren, their nobles, and entered into a curse and into an oath to walk in God's law. In whose law? Into God's law. To walk into God's law, come on. Which was given by Moses. Which is given by who? Moses. By Moses, come on. The servant of God. You see that? So the, the law was given by Moses to the Israelites, but it's ultimately the Most High's law, right? We just call it Mosaic law to have a point of reference, right? But there's only one law. It's God's law, right? So you got any questions? Yeah, What's your question before you go? Say that again. Say, wait, elaborate. What do you mean? Do other religions have influence on the Bible or do other religions get influence from the Bible? So, so the, are you asking me, do, do other religions help write this Bible? Is that what you're saying? No. No, no other religions help write the Bible. Now, other religions get the Bible, right? And then they, they, they get bits and pieces from the Bible and make a religion. You got Islam, you got Christianity, Catholicism, right? They all get their information from the Bible, right? They chop it up, they screw it up, they mix it all up, they defile it. But ultimately, this Bible is about a culture. It's not about a religion. You got to understand that. It's a book of culture. It has lineage, genealogy, laws, commandments, statutes, stories about our people. There's nothing religious about it, brother, right? It's all about culture. It's all about history of our people, right? So that's, I, I was wanting to make sure I was hearing your question. Did that answer your question? Yeah, no, nobody's religion came into, give me Psalm 68 and 11, right? Give me Psalm 68 and 11, right? No other, no other religion has influenced this Bible, right? I'm going to show you something. I know you got to go, but you got to understand. You got to keep these laws. Let's get in the uh, duties of man, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Ain't got to go. Yeah, you might as well stay here, brother, and get this spiritual food. We out here giving you spiritual food right here. Read that. Psalm 68, verse 11. Come on. The Lord gave the word. Who? The Lord gave the word. The Most High Lord gave the word. Come on. Great was the company of those that published it. You see that? And who published all these books? Israelite men. Israelite men wrote all these books. Your Torah was written by Moses, right? Paul wrote letters, right, to Israelites that were scattered abroad, right? To actual, he, he didn't write, Paul's letters was not to everybody, contrary to what the Catholic Church, right, told us, right? Because you, you were Catholic growing up? What's Paul's letters? Paul, the epistles, right? Galatians, Corinthians, right? Ephesians, Romans, Acts, right? right? These are all Paul's epistles. These are letters written to people, right, that was living in these different providences in Greece and Asia Minor. Does that make sense? So, so Paul's letters, right, was, which is where a lot of the Christian doctrine get their understanding from, is actually written to a group of people, right, that were Israelites. And he said, great is those that published it, but the Lord gave the word, right? So no other nation, uh, their religion or their deities, right, had an influence on this Bible, right? Now, the contrary, right, you can flip it around, and other religions did get information from this Bible, right? But that's why we said to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, there's no light in them, right? So, so you say you weren't Catholic? What you grew up as? What, uh, what denomination? Pentecostal? What, is, what does Pentecostal mean? Give me Acts 2. I'll show you something about Pentecost, right? Read what you got. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. Come on. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Come on. Fear God. Do what? Fear God. How do you fear God, Juan Carlos? There you get a brother a hand, man. Get a brother a hand. Look. You, you fear the most high God by doing what? Following his laws, right? Read. And keep his commandments. And keep his commandments. Come on. For this is the whole duty of man. So the whole duty of you, brother, is to keep his laws, statutes, and commandments. Right? You got to get your... Let's get the numbers 1538. Let's give him one of these laws. Give me Acts 2. Start at verse 1. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. So you're a Pentecostal. You, you grew up as Pentecostal, right? But you don't know what Pentecost means. So you were in the church, how old are you? 22, you were in the church 22 years and they never told you what being a Pentecost meant? Watch this. And when 
The day of Pentecost was fully come. So the day of what? Pentecost was fully come. So being a Pentecost, the day of Pentecost is a feast day, going back to the first fruits. Right? Read. They were all with one accord in one place. You see that? So you understand what first fruits is, first of all. It's a high holy day that the most high told us to keep. It's a feast day. So to be a Pentecost, you have to to be Pentecostal, right? You have to understand what the what first fruits is, right? And and y'all never kept first fruits in the church of Pentecost. You never knew first fruits, but you called you, they called you Pentecostal. You see the hypocrisy in, in the churches, right? Read. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Come on. As of a rushing mighty wind. Come on. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Read on. Verse 3. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. Verse 4. Come on. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. So they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they were keeping the day of Pentecost. First fruits, right? Come on. And began to speak with other tongues. With other tongues because they were from different languages, from different areas of the world. They were some from Egypt, some over from Greek, some over there from Israel, some over there in Asia Minor, all over. They all came back, right? And, and they kept these first fruits. They kept these feast days. That's what we're talking about, right? So that's it on that. So now you know what Pentecost is. Right? Pentecost goes back to a feast day called First Fruits. So when you go back to your church, your, your, your pastor, right? Your last day there at church, right? When you go back, that's your last day there, right? You got to tell them you're not teaching the Bible right. Why? Because you never told me what Pentecost meant. But you told me I was Pentecostal. What makes a Pentecost different from a Baptist? But, 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 did, but do y'all follow First Fruits? So, so in your mind, before you came out here today... What would you say the difference between a Pentecost, Baptist, uh, 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 Episcopalian, uh, 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 um, apostolic, right? What, what's the difference between y'all's denominations? You see that? But you are the same denomination, which was what? That you ain't got to keep any laws that the Most High gave us, right? And the Most High said these laws are in forever, right? What you holding? Uh, numbers. 1538. Let's get you a, a, a couple laws. You eat pork? Shrimp? Crab? Lobster? Give me Leviticus 11. Watch this. I'm going to show you some laws you can take, Juan Carlos, that you can apply tonight, brother. Read. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Come on. Speaking to the children of Israel. To the who? Children of Israel. So this is all for the Israelites. Are you an Israelite? Okay, read this. And bid them that they make them fringes in the border of their garments. They make them what? Fringes in the border of their garments. So look around, brother. Look at everybody's garments. What all do we have in common that you don't have in common? Fringes, right? Now, what a, in Honduras, did, did you remember fringes? A uh, part of your, uh, uh, your your grandparents, abuela, they never had fringes. What about the? If you go back and look at the art, right, of that landmass, right? Even the people in South America, Mexico, right, and, and North America, they all had fringes on. Look at the Native American, right? They're known for having fringes, right? So the idea, right, of us being the Israelites goes back, right, to this Bible. And then one of the laws that we kept was what that we wore fringes. Read. That they make them fringes on, in the borders of their garments uh -huh. throughout their generations. Throughout their generations, right? Meaning today, right? Your lineages, they must wear fringes. Come on. And that they put upon the fringe of, of the borders a ribbon of blue. A ribbon of blue, right? So look at that. Everybody got a ribbon of blue on their fringes. Read on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe uh -huh. that ye may look upon it. And remember all the commandments of the Lord. So this is a, a walking sign, right? You wake up, you know, hey, well, shoot, what am I doing today? You look down, right? You see your fringes. Let me do my shemais. Let me, let me read. Oh, hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our power, Yahweh is one, right? Oh, let me not eat pork. Let me not eat shrimp, crab, and lobster, right? Let me keep these feast days. Then when's the Sabbath day? I got to find the Sabbath day. When is the uh, feast, the next high holy day? When's Hanukkah, right? All these things that's coming up, you're gonna, it's going to be on your mind. Why? Because you're an Israelite. And you got these friends. This is a sign for you, brother. Read on. And remember the commandments of the Most High and do them. So you got to remember the Most High the commandments. But just don't remember it. You got to also do what? Do them. And you also got to do them. Be obedient. Right? You don't want to live in sin, right? Right. So sin is what? The transgression of what? Of the law. So I got to know the law to keep the law so I'm not in sin. That's easy, right? Come on. 
and that ye seek not after your own heart. So don't go after your own ideas. Well, God knows my heart. God knows I mean well. No, God knows if you're obedient or not. Come. Read. And your own eyes. Uh huh. After which you used to go a horn. And we used to go a horn by worshiping other gods, other deities, things of that nature. Let's get this Leviticus 11 and give me that in the uh, the, the, the ones that come out the water. Was that seven? Okay, go to nine. Yeah, that's it. Because uh, he, he doesn't eat pork. Why don't you eat pork? You, you don't like it, right? That's the spirit. All right, read on. It wasn't for our people, brother, right? Read that. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 9. Come on. These shall ye eat of all that are in the water. So this is what you can't eat that come out the water. Read. Whatsoever have fins and scales. So it has to have fins and scales. Now you say you eat shrimp, right? Now does shrimp have fins and scales? Look up a shrimp, right? What about lobster? Do they have fins? Lobsters don't have fins. They got hands, right? Do they have scales? Yeah, they got a shell, right? So they're unclean. Read on. In the waters, in the sea, uh -huh. and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. Come on. Verse 10. So salmon has fins. I'm going to tell you what you can't eat. You can eat salmon. You can eat whitefish, right? You can eat uh, um, uh, trout, right? Things like that. As long as it has fins and scales, you're okay. Read. Verse 10. Come on. And all that have not fins and scales. So in everything, the mussels, oysters, clams, uh, uh, damn, what's, what's another one? Uh, catfish, scallops, right? All that? Who's that? Squid, octopus, calamari, right? That's all in the ocean, but they don't have fins or scales, right? Read. In the rivers. Alligator meat. Yeah, over at the Big Easy right here, right? They got these alligator bites, right? They put that lemon on there. That's unclean. Right. Read. Of all that move in the waters, uh -huh. and of any living thing which is in the waters, uh -huh. they shall be an abomination a unto you. A what? Abomination unto you. So that's the highest level of sin is the abomination. So if I'm over here uh, uh, eating on shellfish and crabs and oysters, right, it's an abomination according to the Most High and His laws. Right? If I eat that, I'm in sin. Right? Now give me, give me Hebrews 10:26. I'm going to leave you with this one because Hebrews 10, 26, that's the nail in the coffin, right? You just got marked tonight, right, on Saturday afternoon because we told you, right, the law. Now, if you mess around and break the law going forward, now you're in, 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 in terms of eternal damnation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> read, read, read what you got. Right? Hebrews 10, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Read this. For if we sin willfully, so what is sin? So if we transgress the law, what willfully read? After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. So, brother Juan, did you receive the knowledge of the truth today? Okay, read. There remains no more sacrifice for sin. Now, what does that mean? There's no more sacrifice for sins. But, 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 who sacrificed for you? Jesus Christ, right? Now, Jesus Christ, right? His blood is no longer for you because you sin willfully. You knew I can't keep these commandments. You know I gotta keep the law. And I'm read it again. For if sin Hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. So no shrimp, sis. We were just showing wine, no shrimp, no crab, no lobster, no pork. Listen to this. For if we sin willfully, so if we break the laws of God willfully, the God that we love, right? The God that we, we call on when we in trouble, right? You, you got to pay a ticket, right? You in court, right? Whatever. You calling on Jesus, right? If we do this willfully, read. After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. And we, all, we are all witnesses that Juan Carlos, right, actually has received the knowledge of the truth, right? He called himself knowing that I can't, I can't break God's laws anymore, read. There remains no more sacrifice for sin. So now you're in term, you're in line of internal damnation. If, but you gotta learn the laws. You gotta learn the laws first, right? And it's not gonna happen overnight. So we got a school, brother, right? You got the flyer. So we got a school. We actually come out here every Saturday and we teach the words of the Most High, right? We teach the truth of the Bible. We showed you. We showed you tonight, right? We right here on uh, Person and Hargit. I mean, we right here on uh, Martin Street, right? But we actually showed you, right, what it means to be a Pentecostal. And it goes back to what? With first fruits. Get a brother a hand. Get a brother a hand, right? You see that? So you got your spiritual food before you got your food today, brother. Right? All praises, brother. All praises. And since you gotta you gotta you gotta learn this information as well. 
Yeah. Hey, y'all got time right now, right? Can you type in your YouTube, your How Was Camp RNC? All right. Uh, don't promise me. You got to promise the Most High. I'm nobody, right? I'm, I, the Bible says that we are what? We are clay. We're nothing, right? We're nothing. You got to promise the Most High. Right? Promise to your Father. So what's, so so before you leave, right, we got to keep the laws, right? All praises to the Most High. So what tribe you from? Zebulon? Okay, all praises. Hey, that's a mighty tribe, right? Zebulon's a mighty tribe. Commit a word, sis. Commit a word, right? Keep reading the Bible, brother. Keep reading. Hey, look. But you got to come and get this word from us, brother, right? Right here every Saturday. Right here every Saturday. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Jack Sparrow, how you doing, brother? You got a, you got a question? You got a question? Come listen to the word. What's your nationality? Who, who are you? Who? I can't speak up, brother. Use your man voice. Oh, you can come up. All praises. What's your nationality? Who? Put what down? Put what down? Put, yeah, I'm asking because you sound really feminine. That's why I said that. I asked you what's your nationality. What is my nationality? I'm asking you a question. Yeah, I'll pay you. I'll pay you, but I didn't want that on my table. Talk to me. I'm asking you a question. I'm asking you a question. If, if you're not, if you're not strong enough to have this conversation, then walk up the street. Okay? You sat over here listening to him. I'm asking you a question, and you don't tell me what to do. You're not running nothing up here. You're not running nothing up here. You got some nerve coming up here telling me to put something down. That's why you got your bottle thrown over there. That's right. I did it. Do something. Where we at? Let's give me Job 13. Yes, I'm an apostle of the Father. Yes. Yes. Show me, show me, show me, show me, show me. No, 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 no. I don't want to touch you. I don't want to touch you. You effeminate and you, you, you a homosexual. We're not dealing with you. What's the, well, how about this? How about you dress, dress like a man? Do that. Stop being effeminate. Let's get Joel 13. We're not dealing with this faggot, man. We're not doing that. Yes, yes. What is our God? God, give me, let me say, give me fit number, Exodus 15. Give me 15 and 3. Let me, give me Exodus 15 and 3. We're going to school you, boy. We're going to school you, boy. Give me Exodus 15 and 3. You have nothing to share to me. Yeah, don't put your bottle on my table. How about that? And I ain't paying a damn thing. Give me Exodus 15 and 3. We man a war up here, man. Right? Ignorance, yeah, but you got your bottle thrown. Read what you got, huh? There's a book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. You're not my neighbor. You might be a damn Edomite, man. Read what you got. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is what? A man of war. The Lord is what? A man of the war. The Lord is a man of war. So you said, well, my God, he's a man of war. Read it again, brother. The Lord is a man of war. Is that, is that the God we're talking about? You don't know a damn thing about my God. Read it again. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is what? A man, a man of war. The Lord is a man of war. You're looking at warriors up here. Start from the six. We're going to start at verse six. Joe. I'm going with you. You, you dismiss. Joe. You dismiss. Let's chapter read that. 13, Joe, chapter 13, verse 6. Come on. Hear now my reasoning. Do what? Hear now my reasoning. Hear now my reasoning. Now my reasoning. Read. And hearken to the pleading of my lips. And hearken to the what? The pleading of my the lips. The pleading of my lips. Come on. Will ye speak weakly for God? Will we do what? Will we speak weakly for God? Will we speak weakly for God? Give me Jeremiah 6 and 16. We're not playing no games up here. If you, ain't, if you can't answer a simple question, then step. Read. And talk deceitfully uh -huh. for him. And do what? And talk deceitfully for him. Come on. Will you accept his person? Will you what? Will you accept his person? If we're asking our people, are you going to respect the person of the Most High God? We're not out here in these last days playing games, man. We are not out here playing games, right? With everything going on, we have no time, right, for all the buffoonery out here. Give me that in uh, Jeremiah 6 and 16. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 16. Come on. Thus says the Lord. Thus said who? The Lord. The Lord said, Lord, thus said the Lord, Yahweh, right? The man of war, read. Stand thee in the ways and see. And we out here standing in the ways and we trying to look for our people. Come on. And as for the old paths. And as for what? The old paths. The old paths is going back to the law, statutes, and commandments, right? We asking our people, do you know the law, statutes, and commandments in these last days? Read on. Where's the good way? Where's what? The good way. Where's the good way? Come on. And walk therein. And walk what? Therein. I'm not dealing with you. Read. 
And ye shall find rest of your souls. Hey, ask for the most high for the law, and you will find rest for your souls. Come on. But they say, we will not walk therein. And what do our people say every day we come out here and teach? Read that part again, brother. We will not walk therein. We will not walk therein. Our people reject the most highs day in and day out, right? Day in and day out. Read. Also, I sent watchmen over you. And he sent watchmen to come out here and teach the words of the most high God, man. He said, he, I'm going to send y'all watchmen to tell y'all to return and re return your reproof, man. Our people are in so much sin and so much wickedness. Right now you got men coming out here that standing firmly on the, on the two toes down right for the most high, man. Right? Read on. Also, I set watchmen over you. Uh -huh. Saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. He said, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. You listen to the trumpets right now coming out here and teach the word. Right? Read. But they say, I will not hearken. They said what? I will not hearken. They're saying I will not hearken, right? They want to put crystals on their neck and all these types of idolatrous chains around their bodies, man. That's the problem with our people, right? Come on. You want to be like the damn heathen all the damn time. Read. Therefore, hear ye nations. Hear the what? Hear ye nations. Hear ye nations. All these other nations out there that's afflicting our people and putting all these things on our people to come on and actually disobey our father. Come on. And know our congregation. And know our congregation. You look at the congregation of Yahweh's camp. Read. What is amongst them? Uh huh. Here, O earth, behold. Uh huh. I will bring evil upon this people. I will bring evil upon this people, man. All these people that come out and afflict our people and give our people so much hell and turmoil, right? And, and have this I idea of being entitled that they can put their own belongings on our, our property right here. You cannot put your items on our property. You assaulted us first. Read. Even the fruit of yeah, their you get thoughts. Your, get your bottle and leave, brother. Come on. Even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my word. They have not hearkened unto my word. Y'all are not hearkening to the word. Let me get that. Let me get that. Let me get that. Let me get that. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Property damage, okay? Property damage. Don't want that shit neither, right? Read what you got. Go back to Job 13. Faggot, come on. Get that pink shit out your head. Job chapter 13, verse so, verse 6. Verse 6. You wasn't saying yeah, that no, earlier. Don't try, to play, don't try to play the victim now. Well, and that's what the pleading. Salaki, that's what the Edomite does. They come out here and they start things up and they try to leave, try to have peace. Right? That's how they come around like that. You got this is why it says never trust thine enemy. You cannot trust your enemy. Read on, uh. Job chapter 13, verse 6. Come on. For hit, for now, my reasoning. And hearken to the pleading of my lips. Lead to the heart. This says, hearken to the pleading of my what? Lips. To my lips. That means hear the words of the Most High God. Come on. Will you speak weakly for God? Uh huh. And talk disciple. Hey, watch. For listen, him. listen. Look at this. Look at this. Look. You better watch him. Watch him. Right. Read. I'm 